right, Shalom, Shalom. This is uh, Brother Osmond Walt once again with another lesson, uh, with another quick lesson at that. Just uh, another update upon another particular uh, detail of the uh, fall of Babylon, right? The sounds of the times, right? So, but first and foremost, we're going to give all praise, honor, and glory unto Yahweh, Bahashim, Yahweh Shah, Bahashim, or Kakadash. Yeah, and that's all praise to the Heavenly Father in His Son's name, who the world ignorantly calls Jesus Christ. Real name in the Hebrew is Yahweh Shah, and also giving praise, honor, and glory unto the Holy Spirit as well. Right, which is the force and the entity that allows you know this edification and knowledge and wisdom and understanding to be uh, made manifest in these last days to comfort the elect and i want to say shalom to the akim and Akwath and give double honors unto my elders who've taught me this truth all right so let's go ahead and jump into it all right <clears throat> and as you can see on this headline it says developing all right so first and foremost you know that word developing you know it means that it's uh it's underway you know it's in it's in the workings it's brewing up and right now the, the most high has a lot of brewing uh, or a lot of plagues and pestilences and famines uh, and all types of atrocities uh, developing, you know, uh, for the wicked, right? These things are uh, these things that we're that we're going into on a daily. Uh, these are all basically signs of the times for us to know, uh, for us to see the type of desolation that the Most High has planned for the wicked. Because as you know, scriptures um, you know clearly state that these things are uh, that that evils are made for the wicked, man. You know, they're not made for the just. They're not made for the upright of heart. All right. So like Psalms 91 said, he says, well, only with thy eyes shall you behold the reward of the wicked. You know, so the most house uh, is protecting and will continue to protect his elect, you know, his sincere men and women and even children uh, in the truth in these latter days. But let's let's look at this. It says developing a giant dust storm seen on satellite heading to America, a.k.a. Babylon. All right. When you go into that word Babylon. It means uh, Babel, right, in the Hebrew, which uh, which translates to confusion, right? And also, when you dig a little deeper, it literally means dust, right? Because dust symbolizes confusion, you know, and mixing. You know, if, if somebody was to, you know, spread dust before you, you can't see in front of you, you know? So it, it symbolizes confusion. So this is, this is another uh, uh, telltale sign that lets you know that we're dwelling in the midst of Babylon. We're dwelling in the land of dust, man. You know, because everything is mixed up. Everything is uh, cloudy over here, right? So let's look at this. But this is a physical storm that's on its way, man. Let's read a little bit. And it says, uh, a huge Saharan dust storm has been captured on satellite heading for the Americas. All right? It says, experts as NASA Earth Observatory say that the strong winds blew across uh, Malian, Maturiana earlier this month sweeping desert dust over Senegal and the Gambia and into the Atlantic it says the NASA uh, NOAA Suwami NWP uh, Satellite for uh, on June 4th and by June 7th the dust cloud was seen moving through the Central Atlantic region the storm comes one year after NASA satellites captured the largest dust storm check this out this storm C comes one year after NASA satellites captured a dust storm for 20 years, which covered the Caribbean Sea during the uh, during June 2020. And this key part, last paragraph, during that storm, satellite and ground sensors measured the highest concentration of dust in the atmosphere since NASA's Earth observing system satellites were launched. See that? All right. So NASA, their uh, their satellite systems, ever since they created it. You know, has never ever picked up, uh, uh, you know, this this high amount of uh, frequency of, of dust on their radars. You know, so once again, we're definitely living in those days, you know, where the Most High is showing new signs and new wonders, like He said that He would, right? So let's get a couple of scriptures real quick. Uh, let's go over here to the book of uh, Book of Nahum, right? Because the Lord, He has His way in the whirlwind. Right, because a dust storm is simply a whirlwind, and when you consider a whirlwind, it's picking up. You know, when uh, uh, when a tornado, you know, sweeps through, it's picking up any and every object that it can, and and it throws it away, uh, uh, throws it around. Well, that's what the um, you know when you look at this dust storm, you know, in, in spiritual eyes, you know, we know yet this is a physical dust storm that's on its way, but on a spiritual level, this is the Most High letting us know that His fury and uh, the desolation that He has for the wicked. Is likened to a dust storm as well because he's going to be throwing all different types of plagues and uh, pestilences and uh, obstacles that's going to be hitting the wicked, man. You know, from each and every side, 
You know, you got famine over there. You got uh, uh, race wars over there. You got uh, seditions. You got all types of uh, different things, you know, just being thrown at you. That's a whirlwind. You know, that's why people say, you know, whenever they're catching hell in life, man, I'm going through a storm. Why? Because they they catching they catching all types of shit, man. You know, in the storm, you got rain, you got hail, you know, you got all types of, um, you know, different ingredients in there. You know, so uh, this dust storm, you know, hey, the Lord's about to have his way in it. Just like he said in the book of Nahum, this is Nahum chapter one and one, the burden of Nineveh. Right. And Nineveh, you know, um, was uh, was basically um, ruled by the Assyrians in this time. Right. And when you look at it in spiritual eyes, the, uh, America is also known uh, as Assyria, because this is a place where the Lord's people have been um, basically oppressed, just like ancient Syria. Right. So the same uh, with similar desolations that came into uh, Assyria, you know, is coming to uh, modern day Assyria, right, which would be none other than America. It says the burden of Nineveh, the book of the vision, meaning prophecy of Nahum, the Elkoshite, Yahweh is jealous and the uh, and the Lord revengeth uh, and the Lord revengeth and is furious. The Lord will take vengeance on his adversaries. And this is what all this uh, these. Uh, pestilences and plagues that we see being played out is for. It's for the vengeance of his adversaries. Right? He says, and he reserveth wrath for his enemies. Yeah, because the book of Isaiah chapter 63 tells you that the day of vengeance is in the Most High God and his son's heart, man. Right? So this this whole uh, Christian idea of, you know, forgive and forget, you know, we just all, you know, we just let the white man just ride out and we just all, you know, just ride out to the sunset and let bygones be bygones. You know, that's unbiblical, man, because Right here, even it says that the Lord reserveth wrath for his enemies, letting you know that he hasn't let them go. You know, because, you know, uh, we got to remember that a thousand years to us is just a day in the Most High God's eyes. You know, so, you know, uh, all these captivities that we've been through, you know, um, even when you consider, you know, the captivity that we've been here in, in the Americas. This has only been like a day, half a day in the Most High God's eyes, man. You know, so, um, so these things, so he's, he's, he's. This, he's still going to hold Esau Edom, you know, unblameless, man, you know, because this stuff is still fresh in his eyes, right? <clears throat> Verse 3, he says, uh, Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Yahweh have his way, see that? Yahweh have his way in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. See that? And that's what we're looking at right here in real time, man. Let's go back to the article. It says, uh, look, giant dust storm seen on satellite heading to America. And guess who's behind it? Let's read it again. Nahum 1 and 3. Yahweh is slow to anger and great in power and will not at all acquit the wicked. Yahweh have his weight in the whirlwind and in the storm and the clouds are the dust of his feet. See that? So once again, we know who's the instigator of all these, uh, of all these pencilists and plagues, man. We know who's the instigator of the one who's, uh, of, of, of the reason why this this dust storm is coming over here to America, this is basically the mo the Most High showing America that from henceforth, all their uh, these these elites judgments and everything is gonna be clouded, man. They're not gonna they're they're gonna be walking uh, staggeredly, you know. And when you let's go to, over here to the Book of Isaiah, it's Isaiah forty seven, verse one concerning the daughter of Babylon, which is America. He says, "Come down, all right, and sit in the dust, right? Because right now." America um, is they're up in a high position, but now the Most High, you know, through his prophet Isaiah is saying, come down, meaning to decline from your uh, position of power. He says, and sit in the dust. Well, guess what? The Most High is bringing the dust over here, man. Right. He's making it convenient for this damn devil to sit in the dust. He's bringing the dust over here for her to sit. Right. And, you know, when you look in the spiritual eyes, that dust once again represents confusion. So this this man is going to be walking in confusion. Especially, he's taken away that wisdom from Teman, as he promised. And now this, this, the, uh, the Edomites, you know, the uh, the, the elites, the so-called elites, they're going to be uh, in in straits in uh, all their councils from henceforth, and they're gonna, they're going to be a confusion, which is hence going to make this man uh, just go straight carnal mode, man. You know, he's going all reasoning abilities is once again going to be clouded, you know, and it's going to make him basically, uh, you know, further his. Uh, Further his violence toward his uh, his brother Jacob and even his own people, you know, by depending upon that sword. He says, "O virgin daughter of Babylon, sit on the ground. There is no throne. Yet the Most High is removing his man out of power. 
He says, O daughter of the Chaldeans, for thou shalt no more be called tender and delicate. See that? So let's get another precept real quick concerning this dust storm, man. Right? This is Proverbs 1 and 25, and he says this. He says, But you have set at naught all my counsel and would none of my reproof. And what's the Lord's counsel? Isaiah 46 and 10. Right? His prophecies. Right? Verse 26, he says, I will I will also laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your fear cometh, when your fear cometh as a desolation, and your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. See that? And your destruction cometh as a whirlwind. He says, when distress and anguish come up on you, man. Hey, and these damn Babylonians, man, they're going to be stressed the hell out. You know, like we already went into, you know, how uh, the Most High got darkness prepared for this place. You know, EMP attacks, famines coming, you know. Uh, it's once again, it's just a it's a whirlwind, it's a flurry of uh, of these different uh, uh, obstacles, if you will, these different uh, plagues and pestilences that the Most High has prepared for this man. You know, so these Babylonians really won't know, you know, how to react. You know, when damn sand is, you know, in their eye, they can't see. But it's the Most High basically telling them that you, you haven't been able to see in the first place, man. I'm just manifesting your spiritual blindness by you not being able to uh, see physically. All right, so let's go over here to this other article real quick. <clears throat> I just wanted to touch into this real quick. And it says that billions of uh, cicadas overtaking D.C. and East Coast. All right, and D.C., you know, that's the capital of Babylon. It says grounded White House uh, press plane for hours before departure. And if you don't know, uh, cicadas are these huge ass bugs that you see. You know, does that look familiar? Yeah, when you consider uh, ancient Egypt, all right, the most I played ancient Egypt, you know, with uh, with little critters, man, with lice in the ground <clears throat> and different uh, and, uh, locusts and all different types of, uh, you know, creatures. Let's get this real quick in Second Ezra. Second Ezra 15. Second Ezra 15, verse 11, he says, but I will bring them out with a mighty hand. And a stretched out arm, and obviously this was written after we left the physical land of Egypt. All right, and this is uh the prophet Ezra. All right, he says, but I will bring them with a mighty hand and a stretched out arm, and smite Egypt with plagues as before, and destroy all the land thereof. Egypt shall mourn, and what's this Egypt is talking about? Revelation chapter uh, eleven and eight. All right, spiritual Egypt. Egypt shall mourn and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that Yahweh shall bring up on it. So once again, just like he smote the ancient land of Egypt, he's smiting, you know, this uh this the spiritual Egypt as well, in a similar fashion, man. You know, had plagues of darkness. Well, we talked about that already. Uh uh when we smiting the firstborn. Well, when you go into uh what was that? I want to say well, I know this Jeremiah 49, when he uh goes into He's going to be cutting off uh, Esau's brother But I want to say Wisdom Solomon chapter uh, 2 or 3 When he says that he's also going to cut off son and nephew Let me find that real quick uh, Cut off son and nephew Let's see Oh, Salakia, so Job 18 and 19 He says, he shall neither have son nor nephew among his people nor any remaining in his dwellings yeah because if you take away you know like consider what the most high uh did unto uh the egyptians when he slaughtered the firstborn of uh of every uh creature the firstborn male of every creature in ancient egypt okay well you still had you know uh you could still rely upon you know um you know his brother or you could still rely upon you know that uncle or what or what not to uh you know still raise seed but what the Most High is about to do to Esau Edom in order to uh, fulfill Obadiah 1 and 15, you know, to basically obliterate this man off the planet Earth, you know, and all his seed. That's why he says he's going to cut off son and nephew. That means that he has no hope to ever, uh, to ever, you know, multiply again in the planet Earth. See? So this is, uh, this is what the Most High has for these spiritual Egyptians, the Edomites. All right. <clears throat> Let's go back to the article real quick. It says billions of psychotists overtaking D.C. and East Coast ground a White House press plane for hours before departure. Journalists set to cover President Joe Biden's first trip abroad were delayed several hours before Tuesday night. 
from taking off for Europe, but not because of bad weather or a late pilot. See that? So what was it for? Because of these uh, psychotics. So the Lord, I'm going to show you how frail and weak, you know, Babylon and the Babylonians are, man. You know, and how just all of a sudden the Most High, you know, can just use the, this is why he says that he uses the base things of the world to confound the wise. He's using a damn uh, bug to confound these people, man. He's using billions of bugs, some of the basest things, things that people crunch under their feet. Well, these little critters are the reason why your ass can't take off on a plane, man. Right? And the reason why your ass is afraid to go outside, you know? <laughs> you got the women screaming all out on the streets because bugs flying in their head and shit, you know? Hey, man, the most high, is, hey, he's working some, 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 strange, uh, some strange signs in these times, man. Let's grab this in Sirach 36. We're going to start at verse 1. And he says, have mercy upon us, O Yahweh, power of all, and behold us. Yeah, speaking about the Israelites, particularly the elect of the nation of Israel in this dispensation of time. Yeah, have mercy upon us, because we understand, according to prophecy, well, according to your word, <clears throat> that mercy and wrath coming from you. Let's grab that. This is Iraq 16 and 12. He says, as his mercy is great. Uh, let's see, is this it? Oh, it's Iraq 16 and 11. And if there be one stiff neck among the people, it is marvel if he escape unpunished. For mercy and wrath are with him. See that? Mercy and wrath are with him. He is mighty to forgive and to pour out for, uh, displeasure. So, yeah, with us knowing that mercy and wrath is coming from Yahweh Basham al Shah, right? We're not afraid of Esau or Edom. We're not afraid of his devices. We're not afraid of uh, his military troops, you know, coming in and storming our doors. No, what we're afraid of. Is Yahweh Basham al Shah because he's the one who's instigating everything. He's the one that's using this man. So we want mercy from the same one who pours out wrath. All right? So have mercy upon us, O Yahweh of all, uh, O Yahweh power of all, and behold us, verse 2, and send thy fear upon all the nations that seek not after thee. Yeah, and what nation in particular, especially, do not seek after Yahweh Basham al Shah? You guessed it right. The so called white man, Esau Edom. They don't care about the Most High. Right? Everything that the Most High said is abominable. Uh, these men hold in high esteem, you know, don't believe me, go outside on uh, this weekend, you know, during, during uh, June, this, uh, this, <laughs> I don't even want to say it, man, they might get my channel a strike, you know, but you all know what's going on, these, these rainbow people, you know, taking something that's holy, and they're perverting it, man, right, so verse 3 says, lift up thy hand against the strange nations, and let them see thy power, all right, and as thou was sanctified in us before them, yeah, because the Most High was sanctified in us before them, he made himself known amongst us, man. All right, so he says, So be thou magnified among them before us, and the Most High is going to be magnified. These nations have, um, you know, no choice but to uh, magnify Yahweh Bashem al Shah for his marvelous and terror, uh, terroristic acts. Verse 4, he says, As thou was, uh, I'll lock it, verse 5, and let them know thee. As we have known thee, how have we known Yahweh Basham al Shah? All right, through his acts, through his judgments. Let's grab this in uh, Psalms 9 and 16. This has been brought out a lot, man, here lately. It's going to continue to be brought out. In Psalms 9 and 16, he says this Yahweh is known by the judgment which he executed. Yeah, this is how we knew him, uh, knew Yahweh Basham al Shah, and this is how the heathens uh, get to know him as well. All right, he says the wicked is snared in the work of his own hands. Higyan Salah. Yeah, so this is how all nations are going to get to know Yahweh Basham al Shah up close and personal. All right, going back to Sirach 36, verse 5, he says, And let them know thee as we have known thee, that there is no power but only thou, O Yahweh. Yeah, there is no power except Yahweh Basham al Shah. Yeah, your power isn't going to be, uh, uh, you're going to realize that your power is not uh, Buddha, Muhammad. Or Esau Edom, you know, or Caesar Borgia, so-called white Jesus, you know. Your power is not your your electric company, because that's about to be shut off. Yeah, we're gonna realize that there's only one power, man. The same one who created the sun, moon, the stars. See that? Verse six, show new signs. See that? Show new signs. And when you go into that word new, it simply means uh refreshed, right? Because as Ecclesiastes 1 and 9 says that there's nothing new under the sun. Right, so what does it mean when he says show new signs? Basically, meaning refresh the signs that you showed of old. So this is what the Lord is doing, you know, over here in spiritual Egypt. He's refreshing the same signs and wonders, or similar wonders that he did in ancient Egypt. So show 
or new signs or refresh signs and make other strange wonders. And, and these, <laughs> it's about to be a lot of strange wonders, man. You know, we go into it often. You know how there's about to be some things you just cannot explain away. You know, Esau Edom can explain uh, away some of these new signs that's about to be occurring, uh, you know, with his so-called philosophies and science, man. All right. It says uh, all, all uh, inhabitants of the world, you know, who don't have your how about your as their refuge, they're going to be uh, confounded, man. They're going to be left speechless. The only thing that's going to be speaking, the only one who's going to be speaking in these days is your how about your and these prophecies, man. All right. He says, glorify thy hand. And who's your hand? His son, the one that's sitting on his right hand, glorify thy hand and thy right arm. See that thy right arm that they may set forth thy wondrous works. See that? So, yeah, man, this is uh, just a little quick update, you know, on what's going on. So the Lord is about to uh, he's, he's making it clear that he's about to revenge the blood of his precious saints, of his holy apostles and his saints and his prophets. And the men, women and children that's following him in, sin in, in sincere uh, in, in uh, sincere truth and uh, reverency, you know, just how he did in ancient Egypt, you know. So with that, man, you know, uh, keep your uh, keep your mind girded, you know, with this truth, you know. Uh, stay watching, stay prayerful, stay fasting, you know. With that, I hope that's edifying. Till next time, a waffle, a ball, and